Hello and welcome. This is World of Wastewater. World of Wastewater. This is part 14 in a series going over a wastewater exam, which you can find a link to in the description below. If you're following along, these questions are numbers 66 through 70. And as always, if you've been enjoying this series, consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe. With that said, let's get started. If the velocity of water traveling through a 12 inch diameter pipe is 3.75 feet per second, what is the flow? A. 0.2 B. 2.9 C. 3.1 D. 4.8 cubic feet per second. The answer is B. 2.9 cubic feet per second. To solve this problem, we will need to use the formulas for flow rate and area of a circle. These are given to you on the exam. For the area of a circle, you can use either version of the formula. It does not matter which one you use, just stick with it. To do this, we simply take the diameter of the pipe, which is 12 inches, and divide it by 12 inches per foot, equaling 1 foot, or 0.5 feet for the radius, which is half the diameter. In step 2, we will use the area of a circle formula. I have opted to use the version with diameter squared because the question uses diameter already. This will look like 0.785 times 1 foot squared. This will solve for the cross-section area of the pipe, which in our case equals 0.785 square feet. For the third and final step, we will use the flow rate formula and plug in our answer from the previous step. Okay, so let's plug our numbers in. We'll take the area of the cross-section of the pipe, which was 0.785 square feet, and multiply it by the velocity of 3.75 feet per second, which was given to us in the question. This will equal 2.9 cubic feet per second, our answer. Now, if you really think you know your stuff, I encourage you to take this answer and convert it to MGD and leave what you get in the comments of this video. How many gallons of water would 1,324 feet of eight inch diameter pipe hold? A, 3,493, B, 3,852, C, 462, D, 497,553 gallons. The answer is A, 3,493 gallons. To solve for this, we will be using the volume of a cylinder equation and the cubic feet to water conversion. In the first step, we will convert the diameter of the pipe from inches to feet. We solve this by taking the diameter, 8 inches, and dividing it by 12 inches per foot, equaling 0.67 feet. In the next step, because a pipe is a cylindrical shape and we need to know the volume that it can hold, we will use the volume of a cylinder equation, so let's plug our numbers into it. 0.785 times the diameter squared, which is 0.67 feet times 0.67 feet, multiplied by 1,325 feet, the length of the pipe, gives us 467 cubic feet. In the final step, we will take the volume of the pipe, which was 467 cubic feet, and multiply it by the conversion factor of 7.48 gallons per cubic foot, yielding our final answer of 3,493 gallons. The chlorine demand of your effluent is 3.5 milligrams per liter. A chlorine residual of 1.2 milligrams per liter is desired. What should the chlorine dosage be to meet the desired residual? A. 2.3 B. 6.2 C. 3.7 D. 4.7 mg per liter The answer is D. 4.7 mg per liter this is a very simple equation, however, this equation is not given to us for the exam. So having a firm understanding of how chlorine disinfection works, and memorizing associated formulas that go with it, such as this one, will be helpful in passing your exam. This is a one-step solution. We take the chlorine demand of 3.5 mg per liter, and add it to the chlorine residual of 1.2 mg per liter to get a chlorine dose of 4.7 mg per liter. I've placed a link to an earlier video in this series, part 12, question 3, 
that goes over chlorine disinfection in more detail. When performing a total coliform multiple tube fermentation, the sample dilution is considered positive when a. The Durham tube is found upside. b. The sample turns color from amber to brown. c. No bubbles are found in the Durham tube. d. Gas bubbles are found in the Durham tube. The answer is D. Gas bubbles are found in the Durham tube. A Durham tube is a small inverted tube placed in a larger test tube filled with nutrient media to capture any gas produced by the growth of bacteria in the multiple tube fermentation method. I have placed a link to a video that will give you a general idea of what this method is like. I recommend using a wastewater textbook to learn more about total coliform multiple tube fermentation. There is quite a bit to review on this topic that is outside the scope of this video. A flow of 280 gallons per minute is pumped against a total head of 175 feet. If the efficiency of the pump is 65% and the efficiency of the motor is 90%, what is the motor's horsepower? A. 33 B. 27 C. 21 D. 18 horsepower The answer is C, 21 horsepower. Let's put this question in perspective. Imagine you have a pump that can move water at a rate of 280 gallons every minute. This water is being pushed uphill to a height of 175 feet. We want to know how powerful the motor that runs a pump is so we can figure out how much work it's doing. To solve for this, we use the horsepower formula that takes into account how much water is being moved, how high it's being moved, and how efficiently the pump and motor are working. Thankfully, we are given this formula for the exam. For the first step, we will solve for the top half of the formula. We will plug in 280 gallons per minute for flow and 175 feet for head, giving us 49,000. Units are not important here because we will be converting everything to horsepower. Next, we will solve for the bottom half of the formula. We do this by taking 3,960, which is a constant that is necessary for the conversion to horsepower, and multiplying it by the pump efficiency, which is 65%. Converting 65% to a decimal turns it into 0.65. We multiply that by the motor efficiency of 90%, converted to a decimal, which is 0.90. This gives us an answer of 2,316, and we don't need any units here. Let's put it all together by taking the numerator from the first step, 49,000, and dividing it by our denominator from the second step, 2,316, when rounded, this gives us a final answer of 21 horsepower. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then check out the others on this channel. If you want to help us keep making great content for operators, there's a link to the World of Wastewater PayPal in the description below. See you next time on World of Wastewater.